Oh, hello world! This is going to be the tenth lecture of microbiology lecture series. In this tenth lecture, we are going to talk about the bacterial culture media, which is very very important for any microbiology students to know. And in this video, we are going to talk about the different types of culture media and their uses in our medical microbiology techniques. So stay tuned and watch this lecture. So we have, we have been talking about this, you know, uh, carbon sources, nitrogen. We we have done with this, and we all already talk about the oxygen requirement, and based on that, how exactly the growth is uh, maintained. So the chemically defined or the complex. So now now it's time to talk about this 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 culture media. Okay, so culture media can be chemically defined versus complex, and then we'll talk about all the different types of culture media, and uh, their different properties and why we use those media and what kind of bacteria are grown in that media so chemically defined media uh, for a growth typically for chemo heterotroph as i said chemo heterotroph means obviously they are taking out uh, those their their carbon source from the medium from the chemicals and they are heterotroph so they are not producing their own food they are just taking everything from the environment and then prepare and produce energy inside so the the in that media you can see the energy source the sole carbon source is glucose ammonium phosphate is you know nitrogen phosphate source sodium chloride source for the sodium and chloride ions magnesium sulfate you know again presence of different salts potassium sulfate and water so finally for a one liter broth medium these are all the components that they actually need for their survival well the composition of nutrient agar a complex medium for the growth of heterotrophic bacteria so again the simple chemically defined and 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 the complex media there is a difference in the in the chemically defined media we generally provide only the chemical factors that a bacteria need to survive so this broth will not be like that much of complexity you know there is glucose for the carbon source there is ammonium uh, phosphate for the phosphorus source there is sodium chloride for sodium and chloride source magnesium sulfate for mag magnesium and sulfur uh, sulfate uh, sulfur source and then potassium phosphate for the potassium source so every source is provided and we add water as a uh, as a matrix and a medium and uh, the the culture medium is complete but for a uh, complex medium we have beef extract we have peptone sodium chloride agar and water so you know if you exclude agar that's a different case because agar in this case is providing a solid support so this is nothing to deal with the presence of agar but still without the agar if you think about the broth only because we've talked about the chemical medium which is liquid in this case uh, peptone partially digested protein beef extract and beef extract you know beef extract itself contains a lot of carbon source nitrogen source phosphorus source many sources are present inside there sodium chloride is also given as a sodium and chloride source and then the water so you know all this all this compound magnesium sulfate potassium sulfate ammonium phosphate those things are not required if you put only peptone and beef extract because that is compensating for the presence of all the salts okay everything is present inside the carbon Uh, the nitrogen the phosphate the sulfur everything is present inside so that is the 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 idea of of, of a complex medium if you find something which is already a, as a mixed medium we don't need to just equally and and separately add uh, their respective chemicals we can simply directly add the components and we begin okay anaerobic and low oxygen culture methods anaerobic culture methods are also another thing that helps to culture microorganisms in anaerobic condition in a, in anaerobic jar which are also known as the brewer or brewer jar or anaerobic jar so you can see in this picture that uh, we can do that in two different approach okay either we can uh, provide either we can supply this this jar the petri plate along with the gas generator inside a co2 pocket okay uh, co2 packet this packet is is contained in a way so that no oxygen is released it contains the gas generator and the petri plate with bacterial culture and the bacteria can easily grow on the other hand we have a candle jar candle jar is the one where 
we put the petri plates we have uh, we have we lit a candle inside and the jar is closed with a lid so that the no further oxygen can go inside and as this candle is also taking up oxygen for burning up so co2 will be filled very soon so in this co2 containing media anaerobic growth is possible so these are the way uh, that we can grow anaerobic cultures and we know many bacteria which lives in soil are anaerobic you know deep down the soil are anaerobic so those bacteria can be cultured with the help of this anaerobic culture techniques although these techniques are used uh, for less expensive manners uh, but uh, there is another a little more expensive process which is even full proof like brewerer or anaerobic jar inside of which we have a lid and which can be uh, you know clamp with clamp screw at it okay and we have a palladium catalyst pellets uh, inside that that clamp screw and the envelope is present inside the envelope contains sodium bicarbonate and sodium uh, borohydride both of these components are present inside sodium bicarbonate and sodium borohydride together and uh, the anaerobic indicator is also present in one of that envelope so to to make sure that that color change in the anaerobic indicator is the is, is the indication whether that chamber remain anaerobic or if any amount of oxygen enters uh, then that will change the color so that is going to help us understand that the environment is anaerobic and the petri dishes are ready inside the petri dishes the culture is being already prepared or bacterial cultures are growing and generally this anaerobic bacteria takes more time to grow so we need to use this different approach for growing the anaerobic media another unusual culture methods for anaerobic microorganisms are growing only in certain cell types you know using tissue culture with low oxygen and enriched co2 in incubators apart from that there are some cases where we can grow a bacteria uh, like m lepri only inside a certain cell type so use armadillo to cul culture m lepri on the other hand we can grow bacteria inside living cells eggs are used as excellent culture vessels for influenza virus particularly viral viral uh, cultures are being prepared inside the egg and egg is the host uh, the healthy host where a virus can grow particularly for the infection uh, or, or particularly for for understanding the growth pattern of influenza virus we use this eggs as a host for the culture media so these are not the the you know synthesized culture media these are the natural sources which can be used as a culture media so we've talked about this chemically defined media we've talked about how anaerobes are grown now it's time to talk a little bit about the types of the media that means you know selective media differential media and enriched media and what is the difference between all this type the selective media has a separate goal a goal is to chemically suppress unwanted microbes and encourage the desired microbes growth that's why we call them selective so that means uh, from three four different types of bacteria we're selective selectively trying to see the colony of the bacteria okay and that's the idea of the selective uh, media so for example mannitol salt agar emb agar maconkey agar these are the examples of selective media mannitol salt agar selective for halophiles with 7% salt uh, osmotic challenge and also differential for mannitol fermenters good for skin and bacterial culture so for for most of the skin bacterial culture streptococcus staphylococcus those uh, cultures are easily grown in the presence of this mannitol salt agar msa media so you can see this is a culture media and where you can see the growth of bacteria very lightly though staphylococcus epidermidis you know staphylococcus epidermidis is uh, is a very common bacteria that causes infection in the epithelial cells surrounding us skin cells and also skin cells of our internal organs so that's why we use mannitol salt agar to grow those only emb agar emb agar is uh one kind of medium which kills the gram positive with eosin and methylene blue and selective for gram negatives only so it's a differential for lactose fermenters good for growing enterics you know there are most the series of enterics bacteria like escherichia coli can easily be grown in the emb medium actually can you can you know even though you take scrap a culture from 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 your body and if you if you just put it you know let's say a water sample found to be like suspected to be contaminated you take a sample and just uh, streak it in the emb agar and you found out this uh, slightly uh, green turn uh, greenish tinge colonies on top of this reddish medium 
then you can see that those growth is only for the enteric bacteria like e coli uh, so for those which can ferment lactose so lactose fermenters and e coli bacteria so they are good for the growth of this e coli emb agar media and they they contains this eosin and methylin blue that's why we call it emb eosin methylin blue agar and then third one is maconchia agar or ma Sub, this is this one suppresses the gram positives with crystal violet and bile salts and also differential uh, in some aspects so so differential for particularly escherichia coli is growth you know coliforms that can grow uh, in this kind of medium only so why uh, so this one will obviously kill the gram positive like the emb medium so both emb as well as maconchia agar will kill uh, the gram positive and only allow the gram negative so emb can help in growth of uh, all the types you know uh, like uh, all the types of this this enterics but this uh, particularly maconchia agar is separated for e coli and coliform bacteria okay bacterium you can say so those all medium that we talked about these are selective so remember the goal is to chemically suppress unwanted microbes and encourage a desired microbe but differential media to distinguish between different species based on a metabolic ability so again in a differential media we can see two or more than two different types of colony and based on the change in the color and and texture and pattern of that colony we can uh, differentiate between the two different species of bacteria and that's what we can do an example of such media is blood agar blood agar medium taking ships blood uh, reveals if whether the bacteria is hemolytic or not or manitol salt agar manitol salt agar contains the ph sensitive dye phenol red uh, it turned yellow when the medium become acidic so think about it this is uh, one situation where the medium turned acidic so you can see that uh, this this medium turned acidic and is going to going to convert it into yellow in color normally it is a phenol red so this is the example you can see the phenol red color and the moment it is uh, it is positive that means the medium is acidic the phenol red is turning yellowish in color on the other hand if we talk about uh, the blood agar there are this ship blood agar so we use this blood agar to distinguish between e coli streptococcus pyogenes and staphylococcus epidermidis all together at once although we can use it uh, although you can use this this msa agar to simply find uh, and culture staphylococcus epidermidis but still uh, this this blood agar can easily distinguish between these three different types of bacteria so for example strep streptococcus pyogenes cause beta hemolysis of the agar medium and thus you can see this normally this this media is red in color dark red and chocolate in color but still after the beta hemolysis you can see uh, the color is already changed because the red blood cells are ruptured open alpha hemolysis is caused by the e coli and you can see the whole whole agar media turned kind of you know uh, darkish yellow in color where well, the gamma hemolysis is simply no hemolysis at all that's why we call it a separate name because alpha beta is already given this is a dumb nomenclature but still there is actually no hemolysis for staphylococcus epidermidis it will not uh, destroy any of the red blood cells in the medium so they remain intact so you can see a white colony on top of the red agar plate so this is how we can differentiate between the different species using differential media blood agar and there are enrichment media enrichment media encourages the growth of desired microbes by providing special growth conditions or added growth factors while others will uh, fail to receive that uh, external growth factors and stun growth so example you can see that uh, this anaerobic or brewer jar is one kind of enrichment environment that will encourage the growth of anaerobic bacteria on the other hand you know thigh glycolate uh, broth in a in a tube this is another example of the enrichment environment and enrichment medium where we encourage encouraging the growth of anaerobic bacteria and not only we can encourage the growth of anaerobic bacteria but also we can distinguish between the facultative aerob Uh, the faculty of anaerobe obligate anaerobe and the aero tolerant anaerobic bacteria using a thioglycolate broth at a time 
Now, on the other hand, you can see the lysed red blood cells provide unique nutrients in blood or chocolate agar. So you can think about this, this chocolate agar, which is also known as enrichment media or blood agar because we are providing the sheep blood as an enrichment, enrichment component uh, so that we can differentiate between different bacterial species uh, by the, the utilization and destruction of the red blood cells by, due to the release of the enzymatic components. The, the glucose salts agar enrich for microbes that can grow only on glucose and some inorganic nutrients. So this is glucose salt agar. You can see this agar is literally transparent like the general broth agar, but the like the luria broth agar. But in this case, the glucose salt agar is unique because it's enriched for the microbes to grow. And if they can grow on glucose and some uh, inorganic nutrients are externally provided, so their growth can be easily visible from outside. Uh, and the other microbes are not being able to grow which are not taking glucose as their sole carbon source so these are all enrichment medium so you can think that sometimes one media can be termed as enrichment and differential at the same time and yes it is true like a blood agar it can be differential as well as enrichment but when we call these terms differential medium enrichment medium and selective medium we are classifying the different medium based on a different point of view, based on a different property, based on a different uh, approach. And you need to understand that approach. We use enrichment medium to enrich and allow the growth of a particular type of bacteria, not the other. Differential media also distinguish the growth and uh, the pattern of the growth and differential shape and size and structures in the same medium so that we can identify our bacteria and selective media is the one which will give us the in information regarding the growth of only the desired microbe not the other type okay now it's time to talk about the culture techniques and ideas so there are pure cultures and there are subcultures okay so pure culture are used to study characteristics of a particular species you know whenever i say pure culture pure culture means a plate whether it's an agar plate or it's a broth filled with uh, with a bacteria that broth or agar plate should contain one species of bacteria only one type of bacterial colony is visible only not any other not many types are together and that's why we use pure culture isolation techniques not like two three bacteria living together in a plate because you know it's very easy uh, to to contaminate a plate of bacterial culture so it's very important that you get only pure culture and an easiest way to get pure cultures if, if by taking these agar plates and on top of that you, you just take a waste a loop full of of you know the the sterile loop that we use and you make this sterile and you can take a very tiny loop full of culture and start dragging them in zigzag fashion like this then you rotate the plate and start uh, the zigzag pattern like this and then finally take it and zigzag pattern so by this fashion what you can get is that you know at the very beginning as it, the culture was very much high so in this first zigzag pattern you will not get very fine colony you get colony something like this you can see it's like a lawn you cannot even uh, distinguish between a single colony of bacteria then the second one is also something which is better than the first one but still colony are merged with one another and we can see two different types of colony one is yellowish colony another one is a reddish colony and now the third one when you start separating because the, the last one means you are taking very less amount of culture and dragging it almost very few bacteria dragging it so what you get in this third one where you get small number of colonies and separate isolated red and isolated yellow colonies there and from there you can isolate the culture further and can grow them in broth in another you know agar plate and that's how we can uh, we can take uh, the bacteria of our choice and we always need to keep on culturing the bacteria for generation after generation so that we can continue working with them in future times we need to talk about their we need to know about their growth we need to know about their microscopic shape and structure their function and so many things so we continue to do this culturing process Hope I have clearly explained the different types of bacterial culture media and their uses in this video. So if you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get more and more microbiology lecture videos because we have 50% of the videos still to come. So stay tuned and watch all the lectures and please share this video with your friends so that they can also get the benefit of understanding the microbiology subject better.